Alright, I think it's high time we had a conversation about Ozzy's continuous rant about this whole triangle situation involving himself, Onyeka and Victoria. Because ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> today is Thursday. I mean, getting close to the end of this week, making it almost a week since Ebuka exposed the whole thing. And Ozzy has been talking about it since Sunday evening, right after the live eviction show. Ozzy has been talking about it to the guys in the house. In fact, to anybody that cares to listen. Now, it started off as, okay, fine. Ozzy has a right to vent. Ozzy has a right to rant. Ozzy has a right to, to express himself. But now, it is beginning to, it's beginning to sound boring. Yes. And it's beginning to sound annoying. Because... Ladies and gentlemen, Ozzy is not innocent in all of these things. He is not. Yes, Onyeka made moves at him. Yes, Onyeka started instigating this whole idea of a ship in the house right from the very first night. We had a conversation about it all over here. Onyeka started it. Yes, it is part of Onyeka's game. But did Onyeka tie Ozzy's hands whilst she was making her moves no ozzy encouraged her ozzy played along it was fun whilst it lasted yes i say it was fun because these two were enjoying their time together whilst chizoba was you know getting all clingy with ozzy which she still is doing ozzy was comfortable being around oyeka they would cuddle together on the sofa, in the lounge. They would have conversations together. They would make food together. They would eat together. They called themselves besties. They called themselves one big happy family. It was fun whilst it lasted. I mean, how would Ozzy explain all the carrying of Onyeka in the kitchen? Um, giving her kisses on her forehead, on her cheeks, holding her around the shoulder. I mean, that one, you can say that, oh, that's what he does with all of his platonic friends. But... Do you carry all of your platonic friends like that, especially the female ones? Do you kiss them on the forehead and on the cheeks all the time like that? Do you kiss them on the lips like that as platonic friends? I mean, guys, how is Ozzy going to explain all of these things? Because this man has been ranting and ranting and ranting that, oh, Oyeka lied, Oyeka did this. In fact, the one he mentioned yesterday to, was it um, to, um, Suj? In the conversation yesterday evening, he said, though, he even heard that Onyeka said that he asked her out, she rejected him. Hence the reason he moved on to Victoria. That is a blatant lie. Now, there's a possibility that Onyeka lied because we know that Onyeka has been on game mode. We know that Onyeka is trying so hard, you know, to, to be at the top of her game. And am I mad about it? No, I'm not mad about it. But Onyeka is playing her game. And you know what's funny? Ozzy knew. The by the way, twins, they knew that Onyeka was playing her game. But what happened? They decided to play along. It was a choice that they made. Onyeka did not shove it down their throat. It was a choice that they made. And despite the fact that Ozzy himself had mentioned to Onyeka to her face that listen, I know you are playing a game, I know you are doing this, this is your strategy. The guy still opened his eyes and entered into Onyeka's delusional world indulging her she would sit on his lap she would i mean come on guys there's evidence everywhere there's there's evidence everywhere yes there's evidence everywhere how will ozzy beat all of these facts and receipts everywhere now even though he never had the intention of dating unika in the house ladies and gentlemen actions speak louder than words. Yes, Ozzy is saying that he never opened his mouth to ask Onyeka to be his girlfriend in the house, that if he did, she should bring the receipt. I agree. Ozzy never did. But there were subliminal messages this guy was sending on to this girl, telling her that, oh, you know that I will take a bullet for you. Telling her things like, oh, uh, this is where I placed you, but sadly, this is where you placed me. You know, expressing sadness that, oh, you feel like Oyeka does not carry you the way you carry her business on your head. Assuring her that you are going to protect her, that you've got her back and all of these things. Yes, I know that assuring a friend is what you do for your besties, but there was more depth to how Ozzy was saying all of these things to Oyeka. Ozzy did a lot. 
some by his words, but mostly by his actions. He made Onyeka feel like he loved her or he liked her. Love is actually a big word. But he made her feel like he was so into her, that he was feeling her. He gave her all the green lights that she needed. They were both bantering and playing around, right? Oh, shipping, shipping. Oh, snail, snail. Oh, my jet ski and whatnot. They were both playing around. But when you look at their body language, it carried more information about what they shared or what they felt for each other or what Ozzy felt. Ozzy could have been faking it. At this point, it doesn't really matter to be very honest with all of you. It doesn't really matter because, hey, we're not in his mind to interpret how he felt. The only thing we can actually interpret are his actions and his actions spoke volumes. So in other words, we can equate all of these things to mean that Ozzy actually played along with Onyeka's game of wanting a ship and he ended up leading her on whilst thinking he was completely detached from that situation. He wasn't. And let's not lie, Ozzy also enjoyed himself because when he started his thing with Victoria, he was too timing. He would play with Victoria, kiss her on the forehead, he would go to Onyeka, he would do the same thing. So what do you call that? What do you call that? So in other words, Onyeka wanted a ship and Ozzy decided to create a triangle out of it. Yes! So, I don't understand why, I mean, I think I actually do anyways, you know, Ozzy's continuous talking about the whole situation. I mean, I, I get it because I actually thought about it today and it dawned on me that, okay, here's the deal. Ozzy possibly really loves and cherishes and respects the woman he's got outside the house. Hence the reason he's always perturbed about this whole situation he's constantly thinking about oh my god how is it going to affect her what narrative is being spread on the outside because it's probably aware of how toxic fans can be so ozzy has been worried so i put on a tweet today you know stating that there's a possibility that all of this shalayo this explanation ozzy is doing is probably trying to flood the timeline as much as he is guessing that Onyeka's own narrative would have flooded the timeline. So that if it happens that his girlfriend or fiance or whoever she is comes across his videos, his clips, and also Onyeka's one, at least she would have clarity in quotes about the situation. You know, in other words, hearing the truth from the horse's mouth. So Ozzy has been doing a lot of explanations. And it's pissing me off. It's pissing me off because he's not telling the complete truth. There's no shame in admitting that your actions towards this girl could have possibly encouraged her delusion, could have possibly encouraged her tactics. There's no shame in admitting that you probably fell into a game. And guys, you know what's worse in all of this? Oyeka is keeping her distance. Oyeka is not even bothered. Like she does not want to even go and have a conversation with this guy because Ozzy has said he's not going to be the one to go and have a conversation. Oyeka needs to realize her wrong and then come to him. Oyeka is not even making any move. <laughs> Maybe during the pool party, they would talk. But for now, Ozzy is livid. And for him, he's not going to talk to Oyeka about this whole thing until or unless she comes to him. And guys, I'm so disappointed in Ozzy because I... Whether he's playing a game or not, I don't even know, but he's a lawyer. So he should know better. He should know that words alone cannot stand as evidence. His actions spoke louder than the said words that he's claiming he did not use to woo Onyeka. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this, all right? Now, moving on to Tofa. Tofa is finally ready to spill the truth about his age to Anita. He mentioned this during his diary session today um, where he told Big Brother that he was tired of keeping the secret. And Big Brother had asked him why he hadn't told her before. And he had explained that he was kind of scared of losing her, Anita because he actually really likes her and cares about her. And he doesn't really know, like he did not really know how she would take the news. You know, looking at the fact that there's a huge age difference between both of them. So he said he was going to tell her tomorrow after their wager presentation. Big Brother asked her, why not tell her right away? And he gave a valid reason that Anita does not like to be distracted, you know, and it might 
mess up the whole scheme of things for the house because they might end up having a quarrel she'll be angry at him and it will just probably affect their preparation for their wager presentation which makes a lot of sense however ladies and gentlemen i've got concerns my major concern is anita's reaction how would she take it how would she react to it you know anita is a very strict person like way way like she's very in a way she's like a draconian person like very strict person very strict and already she's giving tofa these vibes of if you mess up one time i'm dumping your ass so my worry for tofa is how this whole thing will pan out my second worry is ben's reaction ben enjoys blowing things way out of proportion now let's not forget that ben had been trying to convince anita that Tofa was lying about his age to her. And whilst he has been doing that, he's also been showering her with so much compliment and attention and God knows what else he has been telling her because most of the time he's whispering in her ears and Big Brother does nothing about it. Now, if Tofa goes ahead to spill the truth, Anita will definitely tell Ben and validate all what Ben has been saying and doing. The whole house will validate Ben as well. As a matter of fact, it's not going to be a case of Ben who enjoys exaggerating things and situations, who even lies as well most of the time. My result in a situation of people believing Ben when he tells a fresh lie, especially Anita. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm really worried for Tofa because the guy seems very soft and, you know, very unproblematic. Yeah, so I don't know how this whole thing will affect him. And I'm really hoping that it doesn't, yes. Um, but I'm going to stop talking here right now because I would love to hear your thoughts about it. Do you think Tofa should go ahead and spill the truth to Anita or do you think he should continue playing the game? If you were in Tofa's shoes, what would you do differently? Let me know in the comment section below. I'll see you guys on another video soon, all right? Oh, look at me. I forgot to introduce myself. Anyways, you know who I am, guys, but you're all specially welcome. Thanks for watching this video to the end. If you watched it up to, to up until this point, um, I'll see you guys on another episode of Frankly Speaking with Gloria Elijah. Thanks for watching and have an amazing evening. Bye.